Hi guys, so I thought today I would talk about the many mods that I've done to my main Telecaster. Um, I sense that you all want to hear about this. I don't, and it's just kind of interesting. This was my main guitar for the longest time, <clears throat> and I've really not touched the action or anything. I just replaced this with a mini humbucker and took that ceramic neck pickup out and put it into this one. Poof, like magic. So, um, yeah, so I, I took the neck, the neck pickup out of this one, put it in this one. This, I don't know, this pickup has like a certain mojo to it that it just sounds very dark and jazzy. And, um, I, I like it. I think it's just a ceramic, like a cheap ceramic pickup, but they put a bunch of magnets on the back or something. I don't know. It, it just, it just responds the way I like and sounds better to me for this, for what I do with it. I'll give you kind of a little demo of that. So that's like the tapping tone and response, you know. finger type lead playing and some chords um yeah just a really dark pickup i mean a lot of, a lot of people don't like that <laughs> they they want this pickup to sound just like the bridge for some reason um but um yeah if you play uh, a lot of jazz i think that you want a darker telly neck pickup that way and i've got the the tone control pulled back a little bit anyway moving right along so um the next thing i've, I've done to it is um, i've replaced this control plate with one of those um rock and rabbit kits that's got the kill switch on it right so um there's different reasons why i've done this <laughs> okay so I don't really use it too much effectually, maybe at the end of a song or just to, in some section of the tune, just to, to mix things up. Um, actually, I wanted to install this for two reasons. Uh, one, <clears throat> the angled switch you can easily grab with your finger like this, right? Uh, right up underneath the volume, right? And then two, this actually is a really good 60 cycle hum killer. So like, let's say you're playing a lead and 
Okay. You know, right at the end of your phrase, you know that the position you're sitting in for whatever reason in that room or that particular day, the secret military sending crazy radio signals or something. Um, you can just you know, hit that at the end of your phrase. Bam, gone. Also, when I'm recording sometimes or doing a video, there'll be a little bit of this um, 60 cycle thing happening. Yeah, so that's the reason why I've got that in there. So obviously here you can tell that I have the GK3 installed for the GP10's V, v guitar system and all of that. Um, this this is like good for everything in the world. I don't I, I don't want to go into that. You know, there's just a myriad of applications of what you can do with this thing. And uh, I really enjoy it. And, um, you know, for like adding bass or tracking bass parts, having an acoustic simulation for doing an arrangement, or maybe if I want humbucker sound, I can go and do the simulation for the humbuckers or Les Paul or a more modern kind of a shreddy high gain thing or the um, Holdsworth type clean sounds that I use. Yeah, so. Um, Speaking of those, like, Holdsworth-type clean sounds, um, I've got, um, I was actually playing around with this. I'll probably do a version of this song. Uh, this is a, the chord changes, chord changes the melody. It's like an ostinato-type repetitive figure that's in one of my tunes called Forsaken. Forsaken. It's off of my last album that I released called Beyond Reason. And, uh, it's got a bunch of major seventh intervals in it. Poignant kind of a song, you know? As the title suggests, forsaken. Like you are forsaken by someone or something or whatever, you know? Okay, here we go. Anyway, yeah, so if you've been watching my videos, you know about the different tones and things. I even have like one video. It's just I go through all my presets and uh, explore all of that. But that's not the purpose of this video. Okay, so um, it goes without saying that I've endlessly tweaked this thing. And, um, you know, the action, I've tweaked the truss rod, the saddles, the intonation. Try to get it set up, you know, so that it actually plays and sounds optimally. Um, but there's one pretty big um, change that I've made. That um, and it's not the the shark figures, but um, it's actually right here. So um, this is something I noticed. I mean, that the professional guitar tech community is going to say that I'm an idiot probably for saying this, but I maintain that this is the truth, at least for tellies. Um, at some point, in order to accommodate the GK3, I inserted a piece of pick guard as a shim to get the neck pocket higher, um, and it totally changed the response of the, the guitar so like now the net the the notes jump off of the neck. It's like very easy to get a solid tapping sound with this. Um, so in keeping with that same theory, I thought, hmm, 
why not just get another back neck plate and stick it in the crack, you know, like a metal piece. So I got some metal uh, uh, rear plates like this and I stuck one in as a shim and lo and behold, now the, n the notes... They jump right off of the fingerboard. Um, and it just makes the whole thing easier to play. You can get the action down lower and you play, can play with a lighter touch and it just improves the response. So um, that's most of the mods that I've done. I've experimented with some capacitors and things and, and probably at some point, um, you know, I might, um, oh, I almost forgot. I actually added a little piece of, or a little bit of whiteout onto my tone knob. Okay. This is actually a pretty important one. That I almost forgot, <laughs> but, um, I put a little dab of whiteout on the tone knob so that I know when it gets pulled back, back past like the, the kill switch or something to a certain amount that that's the sweet spot where I get the, the dark jazz kind of sound, but with just enough high end that it's not totally mushed, you know? So, uh, there, you know, like, so like when I go distortion on bridge pickup for a lead or something, you know, to get back to the space I was in, poof, you know, I can, uh, just do that. Just, just pull the, watch where the whiteout goes. Uh, and actually, on the other control plate, I actually had another dab of whiteout where it was like, you know, one to one. Like, oh, here's the zone you need to be in. But this is good enough, you know. Um, but that that is a good a good mod to make if you're a tone control person or you use tone controls um, like that. So yeah, um, that is pretty much it. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this and gotten some useful information out of it. Uh, also, big fluffy hair tie for muting the string when you're using distortion or something. But I hope you've gotten something out of this. So, you know, don't forget to like and subscribe, of course. And uh, I'll catch you on the next video, which should be fairly interesting.